another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the .NET file that is made by GNS3 and Dynamips. So, what the .NET file does is it stores all the information about the routers on the screen and also the information of the text that you see right here. So, a lot of times when you make a GNS project, you'll see these things where people will label the interfaces, label the IP addresses, put information like IPv6, the lab number, and stuff like that. And this is easily viewed with uh, common text editing tools like Notepad, and you could also modify it and then send it to your friends, and then they could double click on it and open the same file as you see right here. So what I've done is I've gone into GNS3, I've made my three router topology, very simple stuff. I've put some IP addresses right there. This is an IPv6 address for another future video. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save this file. And the way we do that is we go to File, Save As. And I've already done it, but what you would do is you would click on that and you would save it to a folder. And what you're going to end up with is, I'm going to drag the folder over, you're going to end up with a file and it ends in the .NET extension. So if you double click this, what you're going to get is you're going to get GNS3 and it's going to open up like that. But let's take a look inside. You can actually right click on this and open with Notepad or WordPad. Either one will work. And then you'll get this file right here. And it's a pretty cool file. It's, it's text, obviously, and you could edit and save it if you wanted to. So what we got here, auto start equals false. What that means is when you double click the file, obviously GNS3 is going to open up, but it's not going to actually hit the play button for you. If you do auto start equals true, then what's going to happen is it's going to open up the project and also hit play. So it's going to fire up the routers as well. Uh, you might not want to do that. Probably, probably not a good idea. So I just always keep this as false. And I believe that is the default right there localhost working directory this is where it is going to save the temp files so that is actually set inside of your gns3 in the preferences menu udp equals 10,000 that's going to be the first port that dynamips is going to use some of you may have ran into some trouble where it'll say something like port is already open or unable to start uh, you know gns3 or unable to start dynamips what you might want to do is do a net stat and see if you have ports already open in the 10,000 range. If so, what you could do is you could set this to 1,000 higher and make it 11,000. But this is only if you're having trouble. You can see right here, this 3725 means that there are 3725 routers used in this project. And this is the 3725 is my favorite router. It basically does everything I want it to do. So that's why I use it in most of my videos. But if you were using a 2691 and you had saved your GNS3 project file, the .NET would reflect that by having a 2691 in there. Now, if you have multiple routers, it's going to put the router number and image file, and then you'll have another router number and its image file. You can see right here, image equals the C colon and all that stuff right there. This is pointing towards the actual iOS image for my 3725 router. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Now, if you get this GNS3, if you get this .NET file from a friend, most likely it will be pointed to his folder. So what you would do is you would just go in here, change it to where you have your router images. So obviously your your folder is not going to be C colon users Humphrey. It's going to be whatever yours is. I generally like to put my router image folder onto my desktop, but obviously you can do something different. Here's how much RAM we're allocating to the router. And this information is in your edit and iOS images menu inside of GNS3. And then we have router one, router two, router three, all that good stuff. And for each one, it's going to list the model number, console number. And here you can see where the interfaces are connected to. So you can see FAST00 connects to FAST00 on R2, 
FAST01 connects to FAST00 on R3. And then here, X and Y coordinates, that is actually where the router icon is standing at. So if I go back to my GNS3 window here, you see router 1 is right there. So my X coordinate is minus 472, my Y is minus 21. If I look over to router 2, you can see my X coordinate is to the right, and we could verify that, and that's certainly true. And then my Y coordinate should be more positive. Actually, it looks more negative, so maybe it's it's flipped around and going the other way. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, this, you'll probably never, I don't think you'll ever change that one, the X and Y coordinates. Okay, let's take a look at router 2. That's all good. You can see the connections there. And on router 3, those connections. Now, an interesting thing that happens sometimes is that if you are given a router image, or let's say you don't shut down GNS3 cleanly, and then you start it up again and you make a new topology, sometimes what happens is uh, the memory of the routers and the configurations and the the GNS3 configurations are cached in the memory. Some are, they're floating in memory. And what's going to happen is you're going to drag in two routers or three routers. You're going to connect them up. And you're going to have a mysterious problem where you can't ping each other, even though you're sure that you set the same IP addresses, same subnets, and something like that. What possibly happens sometimes, and I've, I've actually seen this, is that if you save the GNS3 file, if you save the .NET file and look at it, you'll see that the fast ethernets are pointing to different routers, maybe that you didn't intend to, or they're pointing to the router you want, but it's connected to the wrong interface. So instead of FAST00, it's connected to FAST01. So you always want to make sure you double check that .NET file if you've come up from a reboot, or actually if you've come up and you haven't rebooted, you haven't actually cleanly stopped GNS3. Okay, we go down here, and then GNS3 data, this is where all the notes are. So you can see note 1, note 2, note 3, all that good stuff. And this is where the text is and the position of the text. So you can modify that, save it in Notepad. And then what you could do, I'm, not, I'm actually not going to save that. So what you could do is you could take this file, and then you could email it to your friends. They would double-click on it. Now, assuming they have the same router images that you are, and they change the directory of the where the router images are. So they would just simply open it up in Notepad. They would change. Oops. They would change this. They might have to also change this, but that's not that big of a deal. They would change that to point to their router image. They would then hit uh, play. Then hit console, and they would be up and running with your topology. So that's a pretty quick and easy look at the .NET file from GNS3. And the changes in that file should also work for Dynamips. Thanks for watching.